everyone. My name is Lucas Braga Carani, and I'm an industrial engineering student at the Florida State University. And I'm glad to show you a little bit of my work today. I will be presenting the work that I've done during my master's program here at FSU, where I worked with the investigation of single crystal perovskite for mechanical luminescent based sensor application. So a quick introduction. There has been an extensive exploration for the development of sensors for structural health monitoring of advanced composite materials in areas such as military, space exploration, wind turbines, and commercial aviation, and so many others. My, my sensor is a mechanoluminescent based sensor. So what is mechanoluminescence? Mechanoluminescence, or ML, is the non-thermal emission of light as a response to a mechanical stress to a solid material. It can be triggered by rubbing, apply pressure, crushing, impact of weight, or even the wind can trigger this phenomenon. It, there are many applications for ML sensors, such as uh, stress sensing, pressure mapping, or propagation of cracks. Um, ML can be dispersed in structures such as concrete bridges, where the crack propagation will generate will trigger the ML emission, and that can be uh, followed by data analysis. My research will focus on the integration of a perovskite single crystal photo detector in a mechanoluminescent material. That is an efficient method for the, to, to harvest the mechanoluminescent light. It has the potential for lower power consumption or even self-powered pressure sensors. So the mechanism of my sensor is the following. So that's a representation of my sensor. Once the pressure is applied to the ML layer, light will be generated and the light emitted will be collected by the perovskite photo detector and, transfer, and transformed into electrical signal. And the electrical signal will be collected by the electrodes and the data will be analyzed. So as I mentioned, my sensor will only contain two main parts, the single crystal perovskite and the mechanoluminescent material. First, I'll talk about the single crystal perovskites. What is perovskites? Perovskite uh, crystals, they have re received a lot of attention nowadays due to, to, to their excellent opto, opto electronic properties and at a relatively low and easy production process. It is really revolutionizing the photovoltaic field. They are currently the fastest advancing solar technology that we have. And the perovskite, they have a common structure of A, B, X, three, where A and B are the cations and the X is the anion of the structure. And also the, uh, another great thing about perovskite crystals is that they, they can have many combinations. You can change A, you can change B, you can change X, or you can change any of them to tune the properties of the material for different applications. But uh, there's also some limitations and challenges of perovskites. Most of the perovskites contain lead, which is toxic. And there is also the lack of stability of the components under regular conditions. So perovskite materials show degradation when in contact with moisture, humidity, or many other situations. And there is also the loss of performance caused by many defects that can happen during the fabrication process. In my research, I'm not taking, uh, I didn't assess the toxicity, but I had to assess the lack of stability because uh, the future goal of my sensor is to be embedded in a composite structure for real time monitoring. The device has to be stable for a considerable period of time. To assess that, I chose to work with the two deeper offsite crystals. They are a promising solution for the stability issue. And basically it consists into the addition of a hydrophobic material, inorganic material that acts like a spacer between the layers of the traditional perovskite and kind of slicing the material. So it transforms into a 3D structure to a more 2D, two dimensional structure. They are responsible to prevent some of the degradation that happens intrinsically of, on, on the device. They have the same structure of a traditional perovskite with the addition of this inorganic layer. And to tackle the loss of performance from the manufacturing process, I decided to use uh, single crystal perovskites. So most of the research on perovskite uses use polycrystalline thin films. 
They are easy and simple to manufacture. However, they can have plenty of grain boundaries and defects or pinholes on the, in the, on the film that can present a loss of performance for the device. The use of a single crystal perovskite could be a feasible way to overcome these constraints. Usually, the single crystal perovskites, they exhibit a way better performance and are more stable than the polycrystalline films. However, the fabrication process is also more complicated and require more attention and careful. This is, is the representation of the syn synthesis process that I had to conduct to, in order to synthesize some perovskite crystals. Uh, first, uh, there is basically a solution-based process. I had to, I, I decided to work with the BAMAPBI perovskite N equals three. That's a well-known rudders than popper perovskite. So, so basically you mix two saturated solution and you left to, uh, to some conditions that the perovskite will be synthesized on the bottom of the, the, the vials. So uh, that's a representation of the, the crystals that, that I synthesized. But for real applications, I had to grow the nanocrystal to a considerable size. So I had to conduct a, a single crystal growth of this process. So that's a similar process that you will make a super saturated solution and then you mix your nanocrystals and you left, left to evaporate it in some certain uh, conditions. So you could get a quasi 2D perovskite membrane. So that's the actual figure of, of the single crystal membrane that I got. But after that, I had to, to conduct a series of characterizations to make sure that the, the, my crystal is possess a high quality. So to make that, first I, a simple optical image showed that there was no defect impurities in the surface of my crystals. And you, you can also see, can see a pyramid-like pattern on the, on the figure that is related to the single crystal growth process of this specific co-material. Next, I conducted an X-ray diffraction on it to check for the crystallinity and the orientation of my crystal. As you can see, the crystals showed uh, strong and sharp peaks, which means that the crystal shows a uh, high crystallinity and, and the planes are related to the planes of the perovskite material. Next, I had to check for the electrical performance of my device. To do that, I, I fabricated a photo detector using the single crystal. The photo detectors are devices that can transform electromagnetic waves or light into electrical signals. For this application, uh, gold electrodes were deposited on the top of my single crystal and a voltage bias was applied to the sensor. And then once you shine light to it, you can measure the electrical signals of the sensor by collecting uh, electrical current information. So once you, you apply some light illumination on it, you can measure the, the variation in current. This is a representation of the test that I conducted to collect all these voltage current, the current voltage information. So another important characterization of the device is the courage voltage curves. So they are very important to understand the performance of the photo detector. When you submit the device to a different voltage under dark or light conditions, you can check how the, the photo detector performs under these situations. It is very important for my sensor to exhibit a uh, low dark current, which is, dark current is basically noise and it's intrinsically of the sensor. So it is, it is because the light emitted by the ML layer, it's not very strong when compared to other light sources, a high dark current will make it difficult for the device to distinguish between ML signals or just noise. So basically, even if the photo detector is capturing the light, I won't be able to distinguish between dark current, noise, or ML light. Now that I have my perovskite single crystal 
to characterize it, I need to, to fabricate the mechanical nascent material, the other layer. So I decided to use uh, zinc sulfide copper because uh, the zinc sulfide based phos phosphors, they are the most studied group of mechanical nascent materials. They show strong intensity of light. They, they are show high durability, repeatability, and can be tuned to different colors, different wavelengths of emission. And once you mix them with the with a soft matrix such as PDMS, it can also show a, it, it can keep showing the high light intensity, it, uh, elasticity, and high repeatability up to five hundred thousand cycles. So as you can see in this image, once you apply some tensile stress to your film, you get the light emitted that it's related to the ML material that you chose. So now the, that I have to that I have the perovskite and the ML, I need to start to investigate the integration of both materials for my application. I divided the testing into two main parts. First, I had to prove that the perovskite single crystal can be used as a light harvesting for the ML layer. And then second, I had to integrate the single crystal perovskite and the ML and the, the ML layer as a, a one single combined device, sensing device. So the testing, the first, I, um, the testing that I conducted, I attached a uh, ML thin film to a DMA tensile test setup. Then I, I placed the perovskite very close to the ML film, as you can see in the top image. And in, in a dark, completely dark environment, I conducted a ser series of tests where I changed the strain rate of the ML film, stretching and releasing the film to get light emissions. I also applied a, a 10 volt bias to the photo detector to enhance the electric current response. And to make sure that the ML is actually the responsible for the signals that I'm getting, I did the same exactly test, but with a thin film without any ML layer. So as you can see in this figure 17, to the left is a film with ML on it, in it, and on the right you can see a, a, just a blank PDMS. I conducted the, ex the same experiments, so I could confirm that the, the signals are coming from the ML. As you can see, for all the situations, the films without ML did not show any signals. You can see the comparison, they are just a flat line, where once, once you have the ML material in it, you can see some very distinguishable signals. And the signals uh, show the increased values as you increase the strain, which is natural for ML layer, ML materials. The current signals collected, they are still in unknown peers, but they are very distinguishable and consistent for all the situations. After I, I confirmed that, I moved to combine both layers into one single device. So the integration of the perovskite and the single crystal were the following. A, the single crystal perovskite was placed on top of a glass substrate. Then the gold electrodes were deposited on top of it to fabricate a photo detector. Then I placed that two very small spaces to protect the perovskite from getting contact with the top layer of ML. Then I placed the ML thin film on top of these spaces. So that's, uh, and uh, they are all connected by uh, uh, contact leads to collect the, the information. The signal output, it will be collected by the copper leads. And, and that's basically the representation of my, my sensor. Here are some pictures of the actual sensor. So real pictures. So that's a top view and a side view of, of the device. So you can see it's a pretty robust and simple structure. Now I had to test the device as, as, a, as a sensor. So this time I did a compression set using the DMA because is the compression is more similar to the conditions that the, the sensor would be facing. So that's more similar to the conditions for the sensor. I applied different forces to the ML layer to collect the electrical current signals. And then 
similar to the other test, I also fabricated a sensor without any ML layer. So just a blank PDMS to prove that in fact, the ML is a response Responsible for these light, for, for these signals collected by the sensor. Uh, for forces lower than one newton, I didn't get any uh, signals, so that's the lower bound of my sensor. As you can see, the, this uh, this is, uh, is a, the, this proof that the ML layer is extremely fundamental for the sensor to work. Once you don't get ML material, the ML layer you don't get signals, it's just a flat line. Once you incorporate the ML layer to your sensor, you can get different signals for different forces applied to the sensor. So the for, as you increase the forces, you are also increasing the, the signals output. And then uh, I transfer the, the forces into pressure. So as you can see for pressures from the value of 5.6 kilopascal, uh, was already was enough for the sensor to capture the emission that is indication that the working range for the sensor is estimated to be low to medium pressure range another test that i conducted was a more randomized test where i just did a, a tapping tapping test i applied pressure on the sensor using my hand at a at no controlled force or time period. I, I apply different voltage for the sensor to see how the sensor will behave under different conditions. As you can, uh, as you can see, for voltage bias of as low as one volt, it can, also, it can also capture the signals emission, even though it's pretty low, but they are distinguishable and consistent. And they happen for every situation, once you integrate the ML to the perovskite, you get the signals. In conclusion, I developed an efficient way to harvest ML light for sensing purpose by integrating two materials, a single crystal perovskite and ML material. That was the first time that a single crystal perovskite was used for this type of application. And it was proven that the perovskite can be used to collect ML light. And the ML layer is fundamental for this device to work. So a, a, photo, a perovskite photo detector can be used for this sensing purpose. It was also, um, the, the signals collected, they are still relatively low, but there are a lot of potential for improvement. The, the perovskite material can be changed, the ML can be changed, and they also can be tuned to optimize the performance. And overall, the process is uh, present, have a, a relatively low cost for production, and it's easy to manufacture in, the, in a very simple and robust structure. So that presents a great potential for the development of these types of sensors. So thank you. I appreciate this opportunity to present my work.